Okay, so my hair is messy. Uh, there's my brother in the background. Uh, my headphones make a constant sound. I have a humidifier in the background. So overall, the start to this video is just straight fucked. Anyway, what I was planning on doing and what I will continue to do is first, which I, I actually alluded to in the original recording of my previous Switch collection video, that I would show my CD collection. I cut it out, but I did mention I would show my CD collection, but I, I was just having a bad day and I didn't end up showing it. Let's show this freaking CD collection off. Yes, I am a CD head. I don't know if you know that. I like my CDs. I think they give good uncompressed audio, they produce great flax, and they're good for your car if you have a CD player. Less distraction, you don't have to worry about your phone, just pop it in, play it, and you're good. Use your on you know, on board commands, it's great. So first and foremost, it's, uh, what is the name of this album actually? It is, it is Bottomless Pit by Death Grips. And yes, I am a Death Grips fan, I'm an annoying ass Death Grips fan, I know. I even look like a Death Grips fan. <laughs> Bottomless Pit is my favorite album by Death Grips. Yeah, uh, that's not my first take, by the way, but Bottomless Pit's my favorite album because I like the sort of rock, rock mixed with rap aesthetic. I like the loud sort of almost like opposite of ambient effect where it's soothing because it's all noise, which only affects certain people like me. It's not very special, as you can tell. Anyway, uh, so yeah, there's that. I say anyway, uh, it's, I say that, I say like, I say various other idiosync Chris that you'll have to pick up on. I stutter and all that stuff. And I'll try to keep the editing down to minimum so I don't kind of give a false pretense of what I sound like, like in most of my videos. Anyway, so we have uh, Bottomless Pit by Death Grips. The inline inline stuff is pretty cool. Uh, you know, the funny thing is, if you look at the back, the inside, I'll show you the inside of the CD. You should look at the inside of the CD. They purposely made it look like Look like it's all stained and like gross and st uh, stuff. I almost said the, the S word, but yeah, that's kind of funny. And the next up is uh, Party Hard by Andrew WK. And this is a freaking banger of an album. It's so good, dude. And it's very, uh, very inappropriate. I was not like, when I first listened to this stuff as a kid, I didn't realize like that I was listening to popular, pop, popular stuff. And if you actually listen to the rest of the album, it's like nothing but dirt and crime and sex and like, yeah. I mean, the whole fucking like name of the album is I Get Wet. I think that's a pretty good indicator of what, <laughs> what it details. And, you know, Andrew WK likes to play coy about it, but he knows damn well what he was fucking doing on that album. And I believe this is like one of his few albums in recent times. I mean, besides the, actually uh, his most recent one, which he, he, went, he went kind of went back to his roots on that one. When it came to his lyr lyrical explicitness as well as... Uh, as well as a different sound to go along with it. But yeah, I Get Wet is a very good album. I mean, I think I typically buy out, well, except for one, you'll find out which one that is very quickly because I'm about to show it after this one. But yeah, uh, all the albums I own are great. But this one I like very much in particular because whenever I'm in a down mood, it's like I have a bad day at work, wherever I may be, I get freaking hyped. I get freaking hyped about Party Hard that comes right after. I get hyped for all that. It's amazing. So it's a real banger of an album, and it has probably the best two song start like to any album ever. The first two tracks are the best, and, and then there's then you get a little bit of eh in between. And then you get freaking get ready to die, which is the which is the other best song in the album. It's and they're all great, but those, like I like I like uh, it's time to party. I like party hard, and I like uh, ready to die. Those are the ones I listened to a lot as a kid. Like when I was like 13, just like I really shouldn't have listened to it when I was thinking about it. But so let's get to that album I was talking about that is very bad. It's actually a local band from Indianapolis because I'm I'm from Indiana. It's called Big MF Stick. That's the name of the group, and it's called uh, Attack of the Peanut Butter and Jelly People. As you can see, it's got like a sort of uh, like hand drawn aesthetic. And let me read you some of these titles because these titles are hard to believe. P O M P Pomp as in you know acronym i ain't with it rolling with a you know apostrophe not to be confused with keep rolling roll which they were their influences on their slate they're very much influenced by limb biscuit and like pantera and like all these other groups they they're not subtle about it at all 
Uh, next uh, next one is bite yo with an apostrophe lip. What's going apostrophe on? Do whatcha? W h a t c h a. Gotta do. Uh, this one I'm gonna have to censor a little bit because uh, Stwicked we. It's S T W I C T W Y for my. And it says the N-word, but with the W, you know, the, like, white N-word sort of thing. And it's apostrophe S. I'm not going to say it, because I think even saying that is definitely not in the spirit of 2022. Uh, but I will see the next the next title after this one. See-through is, the, is, this, is, the, ne is uh, the next one. But the one after that is the, is the best one in the album. Which, funny enough, even though it is the best title, it is a, it is a shitty instrumental. It is the worst track on the album. But they knew what they were doing. It's called Colossal Boner with a head like a mallet. And then they put a put like an underscore. <laughs> like a like a well, I don't know what you call that. But they put that there on, on the title. Let me show you just to prove it to you. And you and you can uh, it, it's you can see what the title is, by the way. But I'm not saying it, but if you want if you're curious, if you couldn't get the hint what it was, that's the title I was talking about that I can't say. But the next one is Glimp, which again, wearing their influences on their sleeve. Uh, the Brain Container, Starter Kit, Heart and Heart and Soul, which you'd think it'd be a cover, right? No, not at all. It's, it's not like that old classic song at all. And then ill Omatic, which is plagiaristically similar to uh, Nas' album, Illomatic, which I wonder which one came first. I don't know. I'll have to look that up later. Anyway, ill Omatic, yes, is the final track of the album. And it is so of its time this album it is so bad but it is actually kind of hilarious how bad it is really it really is i i, I love it in a bad way and uh, this this one uh is is my favorite one out of all of them simply because i've always wanted this this uh album as a kid it's from japan it's the it's the only import i have actually i think that i think i have two imports alongside this one i'll explain it all anyway uh this one uh, this album is very near dear to me. It came out in 2013. It's by the band Maximum the Hormones called Yoshu Fukushu. And it's, it's from my favorite band. It's my favorite album probably of all time. I was ma managed to get it in its uh, original album, which came with a manga. And I'm going to have to cover the back. I cannot, I cannot show you the back because YouTube would not like that. So I'm just going to show you the front. And I'm not going to show you the back. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it off screen and I'm going to show you uh this this is the last thing i'll show you this is the album itself as you can see there's like a knife sticking in the back and if you pop it out let me pop it out you get oh i can't show her i just realized <laughs> i was gonna show you but i'm like oh yeah right i can't show her because youtube but let's just say there's a uh, naked grandma going ha like an evil witch woman and that's the same thing on the back she's on she's on the back too but i'm not showing you that because uh youtube would get me Anyway, I can't do that. So, uh, this is the album. Just trust me when I say it's a scary thing behind the disc. That's all I can show you for YouTube. Anyway, put that back. I'm looking directly at it. Jesus Christ, I gotta flip it around. Oh, oh. Didn't flip it around properly. There you go. It's a great album. But, like all these albums, they're great albums. But, I guess if I had to go into it, it's, it's their, it's their best album because it is so, it's a concept album. It's about various things that teenage Maximum the Ryokun was interested in. It, it covers all sorts of things that he was thinking of. Like there's a song about vaginas. There's a song about uh, wearing sandals. There's a song about, uh, you know, just being in high school and getting made fun of and like being simple minded Frieza, which is funny because they end up using it for the for the Resurrection F movie for, for Dragon Ball. But it was written before that and it was written because uh, Maximum the Ryokun was very much interested in Dragon Ball Z as a kid, and that's like part of the concept. So some people think it was written for the for the movie. It was actually the opposite. Yeah, they he wrote it well before that that movie came out. And uh, there's other tracks like that as well. They, they have their own theme song, like the Maximum the Hormone theme song. It is it is it is a great uh, new metal concept album, which I thought I would never say in my life until I heard of Maximum the Hormone, but it, it's true. And next up is Invaders Must Die. First and foremost, R.I.P. Keith, we miss you. Keith was the best. Uh, he unfortunately committed suicide about, I don't know how many years ago. Uh, he was around 50 something, around my parents' age, which is kind of sad, you know, because again, he 
he, he, he had a troubled life, but I think that's the way he wanted to go, unfortunately. Although, I wish he was still here. I think we all wish he was still here. But he's very much prominently uh, featured on this album. In fact, I would say this is probably the album he's featured on the most, you know, uh, before his death. I mean, compared to like Fat of the Land or, or uh, The Day is My Enemy, he's, he's very prominent on this album. Although it is more, uh, yeah, so uh, if you want to know, this is uh, this is Liam. This is uh, the guy I'm talking about. I'll find out his name. His name is Maxim. That's his name. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Pamphlet, for telling me. His name is Maxim. So it's so if, you, if you're ever curious, the OG lineup, it's not the OG lineup, because there was actually a female member and there was another guy. The guys, the three guys who have been the center of it, like, post-first album. Liam Howlett, who's the, the prodigy, the, the, the thing that the you know it's based off of and then it's the two front men the two guys who do the vocals and do the hype maxim and keith flint you know keith was a very uh influential guy in my in my late teens i think and it was really sad to see him go but invader invaders must die is actually the other import uh of uh, is the second import out of the three because this one was, was from the uk um this one was because uh, the prodigy is mainly known as the uk band Anyway, this is the next album I got, which is also an import. It's because it came with a Russian, and I believe it or not, I actually got this before the Russian-Ukraine war, like two weeks right before Russia invaded Ukraine. I mean, it's crazy, my timing. And I got it like right before uh, the Russian post shut down. And, like, it is insane, my timing on this one. And I, and, I, and I wish the guy who sent me it well. I mean, it sucks that he has to live in Russia, as well as my friend, FM out there. I miss you, buddy. I hope I could talk to you soon. Uh, yeah, peace to the people who have to deal with that terrible regime and peace to the people in uh, Ukraine. It's a shitty situation all around. I mean, you got two governments fighting each other. Really shouldn't be. Anyway, moving on. We have uh, Damon X Machina, the soundtrack to this. This is a uh, sampler pack. Contains five tracks. Uh, they're, they're pretty good tracks, although they're not the best. A lot of them kind of feel sort of background video gamey. But there's a few that feel pretty good. I mean, I would say if I were to pick, I'd probably say Overkill. And uh, Damon X Machina, the, the 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 title track, I'd say, is probably the good, the two really good uh, tracks off the album, if I were, if I were to say, out of the five that are given. Let's go with the next paper one because I'm going uh, I just basically with the order I feel like. It's Joko Looks Back by Jonathan Colton. I am obsessed with Jonathan Colton. I am legit obsessed with Jonathan Colton. I sing all of the songs, I, probably the songs I can sing the best due to my vocal range, which is very poor. And uh, I know pretty much all the lyrics, not not all the lyrics, because you know usually I get some stuff wrong and then I forget, or I get various aspects of them uh, flip-flopped, you know. So yeah, uh, it's one of my favorite uh, compilation albums, because it has all the great stuff, all the stuff you ever need, I mean. I mean, this is like all the songs it's pretty much known for, with a few exceptions. Like, they didn't include the President song, or they didn't include, like, just some, something else. Like, oh yeah, right, uh, they include uh, the Portal songs, which which I, I think is the biggest omission, that they didn't include uh, a Still Alive and uh, Want You Gone. Uh, here's the back. Joko looks back. It's a great uh, compilation album. The best one I own out of uh, like the two or three I own. Let's go with another compilation album, speaking of that. We have by request this is the oldest cd i own by the way i'm pretty sure this is from like it literally says 1987 that's how old this freaking cd is and it's heavy it's like heavy it's a it's it's a it's a uh relic and it's in great condition seriously like insane how great this this is uh this has been kept intact uh it's by request the best of john williams and the boston pop orchestra this contains the Olympic theme. This contains Jaws. This contains Star Wars stuff. A pre-sequel, or sorry, prequel, because you have to say, well, technically the first four, four, five, and six, then it goes one, two, three, and then it's seven, eight, nine. It's like, screw that. There, it's Star Wars one, two, and three. That's what people called it back then. You know they did. So why do we have to play to George Lucas's bullshit? Anyway, it's uh, Empire Strikes Back. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, you know, 1941, NBC, all this stuff. Point is, it's John Williams at his best 
Although I do like his uh, his uh, prequel stuff. I, I think that's probably one of his last good uh, composition work is, is the stuff he did for the prequels. Because I think he was actually trying. And even if the Star Wars stuff is pretty iterative, uh, I think the stuff that he did on uh, the prequels is very good. Yeah, um, let me open this up. And I also bought the prequel, uh, prequel, uh, the third, the third movie on a, on a CD. It also included a DVD, which is kind of weird. I never used it, but I, I ended up selling it to get the Death Grip CD. But yeah, this is what it looks like at the inside. Look how old it looks. Oh my God, dude, seriously. Insane. This thing's like beefy, man. Freaking beefy for like, for like an old ass CD. And let's go with uh, let's go with another one of the paper ones. This is one I bought on Bandcamp, as well as a shirt, which I, I don't have with. Otherwise, I'd show. It's uh, Mitski's Laurel Hell, and I've listened to the song uh, Ad Nauseam. It's kind of become a Laurel Hell of my own. <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, it's freaking. Uh, it's her best work. It's her best work because I only pick the best works out of people, with a few exceptions. I pick the best works out of people. Whenever I buy a CD, I try, I try to avoid compilations. I buy the best work that people have made, and this is the best work Mitski has made. And uh, it contains all the lyrics on the uh, paper case. Uh, and that's the one thing I don't like about it, but I get they're trying to save trees, or sorry, save oil, like the environment, whatever, uh, opposite of saving trees. I'm glad she came back from the break. I'm glad she was able to recover from that sort of stressful period she was going on before the break. I think she came back better than ever, and I think she definitely reflected very well and uh, used that to make a great album. And it's hard to believe it's like, you know, early she's like 29, you know, she, she feels like so much more mature and much older, although I, I'm not trying to insult her, I'm just saying like she seems like an old soul, you know. Like she seems like she's gone through all sorts of shit and she's, only, she's not even like 30, or maybe she's 30 now, but she made the album, she certainly wasn't 30, because she stated she's 29 in the album. So it's crazy to think like she's she lives she's lived she has lived such a uh, wide and uh, varied life and she's not even like in her forties like holy shit she got her whole life ahead of her so like even more crazy shit's bound to happen and uh, let's go ahead and get the last paper one out of the way this one's got a little bit of plastic in it but uh, it's uh, Scott Pilgrim vs the World the game the OST by Anna Managuchi. I listen to this uh, on a car ride home. It gets me straight through because it's easy listening, man. I mean, not much I can say about it. It's just straight jams. I'm getting a headache from all the talking I'm doing. Jesus Christ. Uh, next up is Stan Ridgeway, the guy who sung uh, Mexican radio. It's the only thing he's known for. I wanted to go more with his solo career, and so I decided to go with uh, Mosquitoes. Because I just think Stan Ridgway has great storytelling ability. And uh, my favorite track is the track that really got me into this album was Can't Complain. It, it's such a silly album. And uh, honestly, all of his tracks feel like poems. Like, honestly, if you if you were to read his po his poems, I'm not, I'm not even calling them lyrics. Anyway, but if you consider, like, the next album I'm about to show you, and it's a lyrical genius. Uh, this is, like, actual lyrical genius. This man is very good at telling uh, stories and making them into catchy songs. Like... He has a great ability to do that. And let's move on to it. Uh, the uh, thing I was alluding to earlier. Uh, D-Light uh, World Click. Now, I'm going to take a second. I'm going to take a second here and dedicate a, a little bit of time to reading some of the marvelous lyrics by Lady K and Friends. Let's go with... Uh, let's, let's, pick, let's pick one that I feel like is particularly uh, exemplary when it comes to lyrical excellence. This is a good one. Let's go with this one. This is called uh, Deep Ending. D-E-E-P-E-N-D-I-N-G. It's, it's the last track of the album. That's why it's called Deep Ending. But it's also Depending, you know, the word. It goes, our game is over. I know it's too late. But still we learn from each and every mistake. A simple, or sorry, a sweet, simple love maybe we've overgrown. I'll be getting over on our own, or on my own, sorry. Terrible at reading, apparently. Our love is like a, our love is like our shower. 
It runs hot and cold, hot and cold. It's getting colder. I want to hold you. Let me be your blanket when it gets colder. Like I said before, I'm depending, depending, depending on you. I'm deep ending the, you know, the title of the song. Uh, I'm at the deep end. I don't know. I don't know what to do. And then I'm gonna have to say this the way that they say it. Cause otherwise I'm never going to get it out. Uh, you stop messing around, stop messing, you stop messing around, stop messing, you stop messing around, stop messing around, round, 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 round. She does it again. She goes, uh, and then we get to the, you should have a license to love. You're loving dangerously. You're weaving all over my heart. Now I need a jump start, baby. You stop messing around, stop messing. You stop messing around, you stop messing. You stop messing around, stop messing around, round, 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 round. And she goes, you stop messing around, stop messing. You stop messing around, stop messing. You stop messing around, stop messing around, round, 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 round. I'm depending on you. I don't know how that goes. I'm, de I'm deep ending on you. Uh, I'm depending on you. I'm deep ending on you. So this is the lyrical genius of delight. I have to say D because it's. Uh, how many D's, uh, or sorry, how many E's is that? Because there's only one D. Uh, three E's, three E's, uh, spelled D and then L-I-T-E. And uh, another thing to note about this album is the spelling of some of the lyrics is freaking atrocious. It's like so 90s, it hurts my brain. But uh, man, I wasn't even alive very long in the decade and I'm already ashamed to be born in that decade that spawned this shit. And it's, it's 1990, so that was, that was like uh, seven years. Of having to um, having to proceed, or, or seven years of proceeding to my birth, so uh, my parents uh, were alive and, uh, and married at that point. By the time you know this, this shit came out. But it's a good album when it comes to instrumentals, and it's a good album when it comes to uh, you know music. It's Green Day's Dicky, Dicky. It's Green Day's Dicky. Uh, yeah, Green Day. I mean, what can I say about Green Day? I mean, what hasn't been said about Green Day? I mean, everyone already has that opinion. First two albums are better than the rest, which I, 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 uh, pertain. Most people say three. I say two. God fucking damn it. If you're noticing, there's a lot of 90s, uh, albums I, I bought. Um, it's just my style, man. I just like 90s, early 2000s. That's my shit, man. Stuff that I was playing on the radio and you think about it. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I, was, I was talking to myself about this earlier, which I know it's like what a psycho thing to say, but I was talking to myself earlier. And I, was, and I was really thinking about it. I'm like, you know, Billy Joe doesn't really have very good of a voice on this album. But, uh, you know, in general, uh, he, he doesn't have a bad voice, but you can tell as the uh, as the uh, albums go on, he develops more of a sort of uh, clean and like more defined voice but it's it's somehow more annoying it's like he kind of has this sort of growl to it that i don't like it sounds more strained and like and i guess that's with getting older because like he was relatively young when that album came out and since then you know it, between that and american idiot he definitely got a lot older you know he became a father all that sort of thing all that all those sorts of things i get it yeah i mean uh so this so doesn't excuse the fact the music got really freaking generic I think that's the problem with modern day Green Day. I, I just think they just stopped emphasizing the punk and like, and really tr to in general the pop. It's more of like anthem rock, which I guess is in a way pop, but it's it's just not like the same. I'm not even saying they they should just abandon the the pop or the punk. You know, I mean like have a mix of both. Don't just drop one or the other, or just do whatever the hell they did on their newest album. I don't know. I feel like they just got too comfortable. Is, is the thing, not even that they sold out because, like, honestly, like people people said they sold out the moment they made Dookie, which is like I think that I think that's unfair. They were barely in the in the punk scene to begin with. They were really young as well. You know, I, I think they just did what what sounded best to them. Because I think like a band like Weezer, which I don't I don't have a Weezer album spoiler, but I think a band like Weezer definitely uh, benefits from doing their own thing. And keeping to their sound in their own Weezer way. They don't capitulate to anybody where I feel like uh, Green Day did exactly the opposite as, as they went further along. They just kept trying to appeal to everybody 
so doing their own thing. That's what I'm, I think. I think because they did their own thing in the beginning, it's got them the success and it's got them the good quality sound. Whereas, you know, their their stuff has gradually gotten less and less popular. Whereas Weezer has maintained the same level of audience. I mean, I mean, they've had their ebbs and the flows, but they've maintained that audience throughout all the stuff they put out because they know how to be themselves. You know, and what else can you say? Nirvana. There you go. I had to had to ring it up eventually, right? I picked In Utero for uh, uh, the album that I thought was the best, and hence bought, which is a bit controversial. I think it, picking anything out of their discography and saying it's the best is kind of controversial because you know they 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 had a completely completely different sound on this album as opposed to the first. And, and uh, they didn't really have much to go off of, so it's hard to really say what's the best, but I think this is the best. And uh, I think um, this, it, it's definitely more anti-pop, it's definitely more um, experimental for the time. And I think, I think, you know, Kurt, although he was depressed and although he wasn't feeling great, and I wish, I wish he was alive, I wish he could have kept going and, and tried to figure, figure out what this would have been on the next album. Uh, but he's not with us. And also, speaking of that, the Foo Fighters drummer, who uh, Dave Grohl was in Nirvana. I mean, he just lost his drummer, and and you know he was the drummer of a band where he lost the lead singer. It's like, god dang, Dave Grohl's got a tragic life. I don't know. I mean, shit sucks. But uh, you know what can you do? That's the it's the world of rock and roll. I wish it wasn't like that, but it is. Whether it be depression, drugs, alcohol, whatever. Something that gets you, something gets you. Some people are lucky, they live a very long time, but some people just don't get some. It sucks. It's the world of, you know, fame in general. Fame is like, uh, it's like a drug in and of itself. So, uh, yeah, it sucks. Anyway, on that depressing note, let's uh, move on to something a bit more groovy. Yeah, groovy! Funny thing is, I wish I wish my phone was making that sound as opposed to, like, you've got mail, because... But at least that would have been funny. So I get the boring sounds, like, holy shit. Uh, Jamiroquai. Oh, yes, this is very uh, culturally sensitive. I know, but uh, I don't care. I know Jamiroquai is sort of like a parody on Jam and Iroquois, and he wears the headdress, and that's not exactly PC nowadays. I mean, and he's not, I mean, he's like, uh, he's like half Latino and not, and like half white, so he's not even close to Native American, really. All I know is J.K. Uh, he, he he definitely uh, hasn't changed with the times. So let's put it that way. But this is a this is a this is actually one thing is it's a good album, but I, it's not as good as I thought it would be. You know, listening to it in its entirety, I, it's you know I think I think listening to Jimmy Quiet, you gotta listen to like sort of you kind of have to cherry pick all their albums. You have to find the the good stuff because there's definitely some stuff. It just it falls flat, man. It, I mean, Jamiroquai is is a great singles band, but I don't really know if they can tie it all together in an album. But when they when they hit, hit their stride, it's great. But they don't always hit their stride. And J.K. certainly uh, has a way of producing things, and a way of arranging things, and a way of writing lyrics, but not always a conducive way of doing things for sure. And I know that's like boring white guy thing to talk about acid jazz, but I don't care because I have eclectic taste. Hence why I have a playlist called Eclectic Jams. Shout out. Listen to it. Give it a like. I don't give a shit. Just enjoy the music, baby. And uh, finally, is it finally? It is finally. Oh my God. Finally on a, I guess, is it a boring note? I don't know. You decide. Gorillas, the original album, and this is actually, because I was talking about Nirvana being controversial, this is actually a controversial opinion. I like the Gorillas original album best. I mean, I like Demon Days. It's number two. Don't get too upset. I'm not saying I'm not saying that's crap. I like uh, I like the new album. I like Plastic Beach. I like Demon Days, but I like this one the best because I think it resembles Blur the most. And also, it features a rapper I really like a lot, Del the Funky Homo Sapien. He's featured twice on this album. I really like Del the Funky Homo Sapien. I like the mix of uh, lo-fi. I like the mix of rock. 
I think they, I think that the whole concept of the original gorillas, uh, you know, they hit it, they hit it best the first. I think they, they nailed it the first time, and I'm not saying they got worse, because I think Demon Days is sort of apples and oranges, because they, it, they went sort of a, sort of a, sort of a complete left turn in comparison, so, so I don't really know if it's fair, but I'm, it's just my personal favorite. So, uh, yeah, a bit controversial, I know, and, uh, this has quite the gem inside. It has a screensaver and a flash animation showing uh, Murnock's garage or like trailer or whatever. Man, it's like, I, I remember Flash. I remember that, that era of the internet. This is my childhood. I remember when Gorillaz debuted, man. Like, holy crap. We're getting old. We're, like us millennials slash Zoomers, those in-betweeners like us, we're getting old, man. Like, Jesus. We're not young anymore. Well, we are young, but we're not like kids, is what I'm trying to say. Like, holy fuck. Gorillas is like, when did this come out? Let me look at this real quick. This came out 2001. It's 21 years old. It's old enough to drink. That's all this album is. Oh my god. Damon Albarn is 21 years older since making this album. Probably older because he probably recorded it in 2000. Like, holy crap. Delta Funk and Homie Sapien, 21 years older. Freaking everybody on this album is 21 years older. How crazy is that to think about? Uh, anyway, that was a great video. So I'm going to edit it. I'm going to chop it up and put it on YouTube. Let's go, baby. Bye-bye.